So to get into your album then in the beginning, which was released last year, and for someone who's not heard this album yet, obviously I suggest you to go to listen to this album, probably before you listen to this interview, we're going to get into some talks about it now, but what I really like about this album is it brings me back to a time where, it's like you said earlier about albums and music around that time where people did it for the love of the music, but also people created albums. So you, from the start to the end, it's a journey and you feel like there's some progression in the album and it takes you somewhere. And to give you an example, for us, I was listening to the album the other day and I was just listening to it in the car and I was driving. So it took up my whole journey because I was traveling somewhere quite far. Mm-hmm. But I definitely felt like, you know, it took me out of my zone of like, I'm driving somewhere, but I didn't feel like I was driving anymore. I was just like, listen to this album. <laughs> and it just zoned me out completely. And it's yeah, a really you, nice, man. complete I, project in that way. I thank you for that, man. I appreciate that. That's, that's humbling. It really is. Um, I, I I did my best to to create that for people because I, I, know, how, I know how it is to be kind of like depressed and stuff like that and have anxiety. The world is, is is a cruel place, man. We, mm. We're living in some real serious. We're living in the last days, so we we have to be. We have to find things to kind of keep our minds off of all the nonsense that's going on around us. So that was the that was the key for me was to make an album that, just like you said, can take folks on a journey just for you know forty minutes, take your mind off of whatever you're dealing with, mm-hmm. and you know kind of relax you and, and be upbeat at the same time, but also help you to feel a little bit of what I felt growing up in the eighties, man. And, and so that's what I was trying to do with this. Um, and, uh, that first track on the album, it's, uh, I wrote that song for Bob Ross, uh, (laughs) the painter Bob Ross. I know that sounds, (laughs) I know that sounds crazy, stupid, but, um, I, I grew up watching Bob and Mr. Rogers and, uh, LeVar Burton on Reading Rainbow. And for some reason, the theme song from Bob, that's a great jazz track. I don't know if a lot of people don't don't know that, but it's it's done by a jazz musician. And I was always a fan of the electric piano. Mm-hmm. And that's, man, man, still to this day is one of my favorite tunes. So I was like, I want to write something for Bob. So, <laughs> I, so I did that and, and, and I wanted to make sure that that kind of, laid the foundation for the album and then at towards the end you would hear the song again just mixed up a little bit better so yeah 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 that's that was the goal man that's nice man that's really nice to hear because sometimes i'm thinking that could be my favorite track on the album <laughs> even though it's just like an introduction but i'm like yes sir i'm that guy like i like my intros you know because back in the day when you listen to an album someone gives you like a little skittle intro and it's just like 30 yeah. seconds sometimes it's like the best 30 seconds on the whole album but you'll take it yeah <laughs> you'll take it man yeah I tell you what if that's the case you are going to love this sophomore album right because I, I I think I told you before but I, I don't want to spoil it I'll, I'll just let you when you get it you'll, you'll hear it the 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 reason why I'm glad you said what you said as far as like make sure you get it now because um for those who are listening, this album, again, um, what I did is I, re- I bebop on my phone. I have a little recording thing on my phone and I bebop on it. Certain sounds I like that's in my head. And then, you know, so I got about a thousand of these on my phone, about like 959 of them. Jeez. And I just took the first. Yeah, it, I'm 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 not right in the head, man. It, <laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's I got a I don't know I got a very vivid imagination. Always working, man. Um, always working. Yes, yeah, it's mm. it's, some, it's 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 not always the best thing, but you know it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just took the first ten that I had on like from one through ten. I said, all right, let's make an album out of that. And so that's what you got on the first album, the sophomore album. And I kid you not, has nothing to do with these bebops. Right. This music came about all from the reaction I got from the first album. Interesting. So, oh, because DJ started getting a hold of it. All these, all the folks that I used to love, you know, Carl McIntosh got a hold of it. He hit me up. Very polite gentleman, by the way. A legend. I want to shout out to Carl for even talking to me. You, you don't know what that's done for me, man. Um, you know, I got a hold of, of Princess. I spoke with her. Another beautiful 
you know, mentor, legendary musical mentor. Um, and it was just amazing to see what it was doing. So I said, you know what? I need to make music targeted towards the same type of feeling. And so that's mm. what I did. And and the results, I, I, I don't like talking about myself. I, I just, <laughs> I'll just say this. The, the music will speak for itself. I, I, if you like the, the first album, if you haven't gotten it, go get it. And if you like it, I guarantee you the sophomore album quadruples the feeling you'll get from the first one. I, 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 and I, I only say that because I, I've already sent it out to a couple of people that are my worst critics, people that criticize me to the ends of the earth, my brother being one of them. <laughs> And a few a few folks that are in the the music industry uh, that I that I uh, respect because they just tell me like it is, and they've all came back with the same you know consensus that it, you know Teddy this is this is pretty this is tough. Ooh, so man, and, and I I don't again I don't want to like jinx myself, but I will tell you I have some features on here that some of you will remember, some of you might not know. But when you hear it, I, like I said, I don't want to spoil it. So I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> I think that's enough. I'll leave it like that's that. enough like cliffhanger for the audience here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's enough of a cliffhanger. We're going to wait for the next season. Yeah. We're going to wait. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, that's so exciting to hear. I think, um, yeah, it's just something to look forward to. And, you know, I feel like when your first album came about, Obviously, for myself, I wasn't aware of you beforehand, before I heard this. And it was actually for a friend of mine who was playing on his radio show. I want to give a big shout out to Walla P, who has yeah. Voyage Fantastique show. He yeah. played some of your tracks on his show. And I was like, what is this? Because, like, <laughs> I think, like, you know, I think sometimes it's like, sometimes music, you can listen to a lot of music, but then sometimes some music might just, like, it kind of like just goes a little bit above and just sticks out and you're like, what is this? And it just hit me. And then your vocals, I was like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like asking what it was. And he was like, yeah, Teddy Bryant, MBM Records and stuff. 